everyone, Misco Electric here. Today is April 6th, 2024, and this is The Current, weekly EV news. I hope you find this latest episode to be the most helpful 10 minutes of timely EV and electrification stories available anywhere. Let's start off with some battery news. General Motors has announced that their Ultium cell manufacturing facility in Spring Hill, Tennessee has finally reached series production of their first battery cells. The process has taken years and will benefit their EV lineup as it ramps. I'd expect to see a jump in Cadillac Lyric output considering it's assembled in the same town. As a refresher, Ultium Cells is a joint venture between General Motors and South Korea's LG Energy Solutions. A second Ultium Cell factory is located in Warren, Ohio, and started regular production in November of 2022. A third is under construction in Lansing, Michigan, with production of cells estimated to begin in early 2025. Rumor has it that General Motors is exploring a partnership with China's CATL, the biggest global battery maker. That relationship could enable GM to produce lithium iron phosphate cells in packs in North America by licensing the technology, just as Ford has already done. Two weeks ago, CATL chairman Robin Zhang revealed in an interview that Tesla is also in talks with his company to strike up similar arrangements. Why is everyone so interested in CATL? The federal government has created all kinds of incentives for domestic battery production. CATL has pioneered many cost and time-saving methods which can be useful to automakers as they line up to capitalize on the programs. Recently, CATL announced an upcoming battery with a warranty lifespan of 1.5 million kilometers, or 932,000 miles, and 15 years. The company says the battery shows zero degradation through the first 1,000 cycles. EV battery warranties in America today offer coverage of a minimum of 8 years and 100,000 miles. Many go well beyond that. Our Rivian R1T battery is covered for 175,000 miles, and our Cybertruck is covered for 150,000 miles. We have put over 100,000 miles on our 8-year-old Tesla Model S with older battery technology. Despite being supercharged 70% of the time and kept outside in Michigan winter, degradation has resulted in only 6% range loss. Today's EV buyers can reasonably expect decades of use and 300,000 to 500,000 miles on a battery pack. Thanks to innovators like CATL, that outlook continues to improve. This week, Ford said they would delay Oakville, Ontario production of their three-row electric SUV. It had been slated for 2025 and has been bumped to 2027. The plant will undergo scheduled retooling in the second quarter of this year. Ford's next-generation all-electric pickup truck, Project T3, was also delayed from 2025 to 2026. Ford says the EV stalling will allow them to take advantage of emerging battery technology for increased durability and better value. In the meantime, they will expand their hybrid offerings. Ford CEO Jim Farley says, as the number two EV brand in the U.S. for the past two years, we are committed to scaling a profitable EV business, using capital wisely and bringing to market the right gas, hybrid, and fully electric vehicles at the right time. Our breakthrough next generation EVs will be new from the ground up and fully software enabled with ever improving digital experiences and a multitude of potential services. Ford sold 20,223 EVs through the first quarter of 2024, an increase of 86% from last year. I'd like to add a little more context to this situation. Legacy automakers are legally bound to independent franchise dealership partners all over the country. Those dealer groups rely on service departments for at least 40% of their profits. The leaders of those businesses have actively resisted and lobbied against EVs in part because they generate very little service revenue over their much longer lifespans. Today's typical internal combustion engine vehicle is sent to a scrapyard well before it hits 150,000 miles. Modern EVs will remain in service two to four times longer. I work directly with many automakers and thousands of dealerships. I can confirm that this deeply rooted misalignment of incentives is unsustainable. Ford insists their California-based Skunk Works team is focused on a smaller, lower-cost, profitable, flexible EV platform, capable of underpinning multiple vehicles at high volumes. Will this delay in EV production from Ford allow more advanced EV automakers like Tesla and BYD to run away even further with the lead and market share? Will it leave the door open for Rivian and Scout to expand rapidly over the next year and a half? 
Will they pull a low-cost EV out of their hat in time to truly compete? While Ford's EV efforts regress, Rivian is moving full steam ahead to improve their product and optimize manufacturing. After reaching an impressive milestone of 100,000 vehicles built at their factory in Normal, Illinois, they have temporarily stopped production. They are retooling to raise profit margins and make the R1 line even more competitive. Shareholders are eager to see the company approach profitability on a per-unit basis. Cost-cutting facility improvements will surely move in that direction as well. They'll probably do some rearranging to make room for R2 assembly while they're at it. Soon, I expect Rivian will announce heat pump integration for improved cold weather efficiency, an improved infotainment system and camera system with the R2 steering wheel, and a host of other small improvements to the R1 lineup. I'm also fairly sure we will soon see a souped-up R1X, an aggressive EV pickup aimed at the Ford Raptor and Ram TRX crowd, which could keep sales flowing at the high end of Rivian's price range. This quarter, we'll see greatly reduced output from Rivian, but they've been stockpiling inventory to keep delivery numbers from cratering. From my perspective, Rivian management seems to be making all the right moves considering the macroeconomic conditions. What is your take? Chevrolet has revealed final specifications for the Silverado EV First Edition RST. This trim offers an estimated 440 mile range, up to 754 horsepower with more than 785 pound-feet of torque in the wide open watts mode, 0 to 60 miles per hour time under 4.5 seconds, 350 kilowatt DC fast charging speeds, up to 10 outlets with 10.2 kilowatts of off-board power with optional equipment, up to 10,000 pounds of maximum trailering with up to 1,500 pounds of payload. It also has features like automatic adaptive air suspension that can raise and lower up to two inches, four-wheel steer, Chevy's advanced trailering system and hitch guidance, the multi-flex mid-gate, which provides just over nine feet of storage between the cab and tailgate when the mid-gate is open, the multi-flex tailgate, which will extend it even further to 10 feet, 10 inches of bed space, and trailering capable Super Cruise. Pricing for the Silverado EV First Edition RST starts at $94,500 plus destination fees. Customer deliveries are expected to begin by mid-2024. Chevrolet says it will eventually launch the full Silverado EV portfolio, including the WT and Trail Boss. In other EV pricing news, EV prices are still volatile this week. BMW's most affordable EV, the i4, is now leasing for $499 a month over 36 months, with $4,599 down. Unsold 2023 Subaru Solteras with premium trim have dropped to $241 per month for 36 months with zero down. Tesla, on the other hand, followed through on raising the price of the Model Y by $1,000. Tesla made other headlines this week, too. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt swirled around the brand this week, starting with quarterly production and delivery figures well below analyst expectations. A few days later, a Reuters story was syndicated by countless outlets claiming that Tesla's entry-level $25,000 next-generation EV had been canceled. Hours later, CEO Elon Musk refuted the claims on the X platform. He called the story a lie. Next, he announced the first Tesla next-gen vehicle, a fully autonomous taxi, would be unveiled on August 8th. Another Tesla vehicle we'll be seeing very soon is the re-engineered Model 3 performance variant. Big YouTubers including Jason Camisa and Marquez Brown-Lee were spotted at a private event in Malibu, California with other journalists, Tesla designer Franz Van Holshausen, and a sporty Model 3 variant. This indicates that we're likely one to three weeks away from specifications and pricing details. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's edition of The Current. Which story was the most exciting to you? Let me know in the comments if there are stories you'd like me to look into for next week's episode. Please consider subscribing and sharing this video if you found some value in this coverage. We'll keep making them if we continue to see growing viewership. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.